Seth MacFarlane, movie star? To appreciate the absurdness of such a statement, let's take a look at MacFarlane's journey from behind the camera to in front of it. Way back in 2002, Fox canceled Family Guy. How dumb was that? Well, in Hollywood history, it's right up there with 20th Century Fox letting George Lucas keep the licensing and merchandising rights for Star Wars. As Family Guy gained cult hit status post-cancellation, Fox ended up having to give creator, writer, and star Seth MacFarlane a new deal worth over $100 million. $100 million! And yet the guy could still walk down the street, his face unknown to the vast majority of his fans and haters. Yes, MacFarlane's crude and lewd humor walks such a fine line that his detractors feel he often trips over it, yet his fans would say he leaps over it with glee. But the bottom line in Hollywood has always been results, and MacFarlane gets them. While American Dad and The Cleveland Show don't share anywhere near the same success as Family Guy, MacFarlane's original show continues to be a huge success, so much so that it's pulled an All About Eve on fellow network show The Simpsons. Then, unbelievably, Fox f***ed up again. McFarlane wanted to get into the movie business, and as his contract with Fox dictated, he had to give them first dibs. Fox's film division took a look at the script for Ted and passed, feeling it was too raunchy. Granted, Mark Wahlberg wasn't attached at that point, but still, don't they know that history repeats itself? And repeat itself it did, as Ted made it for just $50 million, went on to gross $549 million worldwide, making it the most successful R-rated comedy of all time. Of all time! Looking to capitalize on Ted's success, producers Craig Zadid and Neil Maron made the out-of-the-box decision to have McFarlane host the 85th Academy Awards. And suddenly, there he was, in front of the camera. Sure, McFarlane had done guest spots and specials before, but the Oscars was by far and away his most high-profile gig yet. And he pulled in the highest 18-49 to 49 demo rating in six years, more than James Franco and Anne Hathaway, who'd been hired to do just that. But while McFarlane was ready for a bigger stage, perhaps his material was not. Many viewers were introduced to his style of humor for the first time that fateful night and found it to be sexist, racist, homophobic, and anti-Semitic. Sure, that's Family Guy in a nutshell, but unlike the equally controversial Ricky Gervais, McFarlane is more of a businessman than an artist, so he ultimately decided not to return to host the Oscars despite being asked back. Instead, he's focusing on his next big movie, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Like Ted, it'll be distributed by Universal, not Fox, and McFarlane will produce, write, direct, and star as a sheep farmer turned gunslinger. But no motion capture this time around, McFarlane will be starring in the flesh. And based on his previous work, pressing flesh with the likes of Charlize Theron, Amanda Seyfried, and Sarah Silverman. Liam Neeson, Giovanni Ribisi, and Neil Patrick Harris also star, because when your first movie grosses over half a billion dollars, you can get whoever you want for your next movie, which is set to open summer 2014. So do you think that Seth MacFarlane deserves to finally be the face of his comedy empire, or will this be a step too far? And is it at all ironic that a man who promotes anti-Semitic humor would turn out to be the next Mel Brooks? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.